Welcome back to Purple Color Life. This is exactly what I was afraid of, that winter would just keep kind of carrying on into the springtime here. We've had some nice weather off and on, but then once in a while we'll get a day like today where it decides to get cold again and snow. Today it's about 32 degrees out, but I've got some firewood work to do. And then in today's video, we're talking about three key things that you should avoid when it comes to firewood. Let me get the old Ford Workmaster out, see if it'll start in this cold weather, and then we'll get started splitting and talking about firewood. This isn't the nicest shed, but it is really nice to have somewhere to put my tractor in to keep it out of the weather during the winter and during the rainy days, keep it out of the sun during the summer. Turn the key on, make sure we are not in gear. Give us just a little throttle. Go ahead and choke. The old Ford Workmaster tractor with its big lug ag tires usually does really good in the mud, but today in the slick snow on top of mud, trying to back uphill, pushing the log splitter with no weight in the big tool rack, we dug it up pretty good and I could not get, I could not get backed in quite as far as I wanted, but you can see I was just making a muddy mess here with these tires, so I decided that's far enough back for now. But you can see how muddy it is here. The ground is not frozen anymore. Like I said at the start, this video is about three things to avoid when you're thinking about firewood cutting, splitting, and stacking. And right here I've got a good example of what to do and what not to do, item number one. So if you look at our firewood stacks, this one, look along the bottom there, pallets or skids the whole way and then if we look along the bottom of this one same thing pallets or skids uh, thing to avoid number one is putting the firewood directly on the ground especially if you live in an area like us where we've got freeze thaw freeze thaw because what happens is the ground tends to move up and down and underneath that firewood it just encourages the dirt and everything to get around the base of the firewood encourages it to rot gets it more wet so you want that air gap that the skid provides underneath the firewood. You can see my stacked firewood here. I did it exactly right. I've got pallets keeping the firewood up off the ground. But if we look a little further, now these rounds are sitting directly on the ground, not on a pallet. So there I'm breaking my own rule. Um, I figured I'd get to these right away. So I just kind of stacked them there on the end, but they sat here longer than I would have liked. So I got to get these split and up on the rest of the stack on the pallet because like I said thing to avoid number one stacking firewood whether it's split or rounds directly on the ground
Okay, thing to avoid number two, and I tried to illustrate that as I was splitting. Don't hurt your future self. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that in a couple of different ways. First of all, you saw I used the log lift to lift those logs up onto the bed and onto the log splitter. That's because my future self and my future back will appreciate me not lifting all those rounds onto the splitter. Yes, it's a good workout, but if you know anything about back injuries, you know it's not usually one thing you've done that hurts your back permanently. It's a culmination of many things you've done over many years that eventually hurts your back. So anytime I can use the log lift to lift those rounds up, it's just saving wear and tear on my back. The next thing about thinking about my future self as I split this wood is I'm thinking about the fact that this is going to take two years to season and two years I'll be two years older. That means I want to make sure these pieces are pieces I can handle long and in the future, regardless of what happens to me, whether I would eventually need shoulder surgery or knee surgery, and it'd be harder for me to lift bigger pieces, carry bigger pieces. So that's part of the reason why I split my firewood smaller. We made a whole video about that. It's one of the more viewed videos on our channel. I'll put the reminder for that link up above, but splitting firewood a little bit smaller thinks about my future self when I'm reloading that into the back of the tractor or the side-by-side -side and then carrying it into the basement to be burned in our wood stove. As is pretty typical when I'm shooting a video or maybe when lots of people shoot videos, but I notice it a lot, I either forget to say something I meant to say or I think of something additional I'd like to say about the previous. So we talked about number two things to avoid was avoid future injury to yourself. I'll add a couple more points to that. You should be thinking about eye protection, ear protection, um, and this might be a do as I say, not as I do. Uh, example because I'm not wearing ear protection right now. I always feel like the Honda GX200 engine is so quiet. I don't run it at full throttle, but probably it would be wise to wear hearing protection to protect my future hearing when I'm splitting firewood. Thing number three to avoid when you're talking about splitting, stacking, and storing firewood is bugs. So we've done several videos in the past where you see me splitting. It usually happens to be maple, but when I'm splitting that firewood, I'll come across ants or termites or something like that. You want to avoid putting those bugs somewhere that they're going to do damage. So what I do when I come across bugs is throw those pieces in the woods where hopefully the bugs will evacuate that log and I can use it in the future. But I definitely don't stack it with my good firewood because I don't want those bugs infesting the rest of my firewood. I don't carry that buggy wood into the basement because I don't want those termites or ants starting to eat away at the frame of our house. And I also don't put that wood anywhere that it could be uh, danger to other buildings like our big 40 by 60 pole building, my shed, my garage. I try to keep that wood far away from anything else. A third thing I don't do, and I know some of you may differ on this, but I don't spray that wood with any type of chemical to get the bugs out. Now I could use natural things like some vinegar and water or something that will make the bugs evacuate the wood, but I don't like to use like a uh, spray that kills bug. Let's say something like Raid, for example, just because I don't know what happens to that chemical in the wood in the future when you're burning it in the wood stove. Um, I don't know if it could be dangerous for breathing, which I'm guessing it probably would be, but I don't want to take that chance and put firewood that's been treated with a chemical in my wood stove. Found another one of those bugs. You can see it kind of looks like a blonde wasp. It has legs. If I roll it over, 
I guess it doesn't have, maybe it does have antenna. And as usual, I've got a bonus one here for you. And it usually is something that I thought of after I say the intro to the video. So maybe I should have called this four things to avoid. And I'm sure there's a dozen more that I didn't think about before I made the video. Make sure you leave those comments down below. Things that you avoid when you're thinking about cutting, splitting, and stacking firewood for future burning. Um, but the fourth thing is avoid burning the firewood before it's fully seasoned. Now, I, I've had a lot of comments lately from people who have been using firewood for 40, 50, 60 years, and they say they don't need to use a moisture meter. And I do understand that. You know, a lot of people can knock the wood together, see what it sounds like, and determine it's dry. You can lift it up and kind of determine it's dry. But my feeling is why guess using those less than scientific methods when you can know for sure, or at least pretty sure, by using the electric moisture meters to test and see the moisture content of your firewood. For me, it's just you know 30 or $40 of insurance to make sure that the wood that I'm throwing in my wood stove doesn't make that creosote up the flue, up the chimney, clog up my catalytic combustion uh, honeycomb up above. So there's just enough reasons for me that I'd rather not guess. Yes, I've been fi burning firewood for about 20, 25 years, and I have a pretty good idea when it's mostly dry or dry enough to burn, but there have been times I've been wrong. So like I said, why guess when you can know for sure or at least be pretty sure based on the science of the moisture meter testing the moisture content. So that's bonus number four. I know some of you disagree with me on that because you've left those comments before, but to me it's just peace of mind for like 30 bucks to test that firewood before I throw it in the wood stove. Now I've got some more wood to split here, so I'll go ahead and keep splitting, but hopefully you found this video informative and enjoyable. Don't forget, leave those comments down below. Other things that you avoid when you're thinking about cutting, splitting, and stacking firewood for future use in a wood stove or a wood burner to heat your home. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and hopefully we see you again the next time here on Purple Collar Life. Well, it is coming down pretty good now, and they're saying two to four inches during the day today. I say bring it on, Mother Nature. I can take it. Joke's on you. I love the snow, so if we're not done with winter yet, that's fine by me. I only plowed the driveway one time all winter. Give us six inches, a foot, two feet. I'm ready to plow again. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time. Yeah, it's snowing pretty good now. Get everything put back in the buildings out of the snow. Look at my coat.
Thank <laughs> you.